Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Galaxy. My name is Tanika Chauhan and I am the senior Salesforce developer and the consultant. So here in this channel, you will find the videos on the Salesforce admin and the development and videos on the mock interviews. So these mock interview videos are of those who are uh, who are willing to start their career in the Salesforce and want to give their interview before the actual one and the same for the Salesforce experience Salesforce developer who are willing or looking for a change. So they guys also send me a mail and accordingly will schedule the interview and take their mock interview. So so this is completely uh, depend on your choice if you want to. Up, want me to upload the same on the uh, YouTube then I will upload else uh, it will be private okay so if you guys also want to do same you can send uh, us a mail and we will schedule it accordingly so let's start with today's video so today in this video uh, what I have done actually I have got many texts regarding the shorts in which uh, I have uh, shared the interview question so uh, they are the bit fast yes. so what I have done I have uh, collab all the shorts and share the bit slower version so you guys can understand it more better okay so let's start with today's video so let me share one more question with you and i have also asked many uh, this uh, this question many times in the interview but i don't know why guys got confused in explaining this that is the sharing model in the sales course okay or you can say the security model in the sales course so here what may a mistake was done, they got confused in sharing the record level securities and the object level securities, okay. So now, okay, let's discuss this uh, sharing model in the Salesforce. So when it comes to explain this uh, security model in Salesforce, so it is divided into the three parts. One is the object level security, then next is the build level security and then the record level security, okay. So first, when it comes to the object level security, we have the two options that is the profile and the permission from where we set the permissions and visibilities. Okay. So here, uh, when it comes to profiles and the permission set, using this, we will decide what a user can do in the sales force and always profile maximum only one can be assigned to a user and to enhance the more permission or to give more access to the user will go with the permission set and can be uh, assigned multiples okay on the object level permission we will decide what a user can do with the particular object like he can create it he can delete it or i can also edit it or delete it so all these permission for this particular user will be decided from the object level securities although that is from the uh, profiles and the permission sets okay next like suppose i have a custom object test and for this object on the profile, I have given the permission read and create so that so the user can read the records also and also can create the records for this object. Now, if I have two user and for the user, one user I want only the create and read permission but for the other user I want the delete permission also to be given. So, this is the case of giving more access to one user so in this case profile will remain one for both the but to share more permissions will go with the permission set and add this delete permission in this permission set for the test object and assign to the user to which i want to give this permission okay so next here come as the field level security so the field level securities are also managed from the uh, profiles and the permission set so here we'll decide whether the user has the permission to uh, edit, create or delete the fill value for the object or not. So, okay, so this is also managed from the profiles and permission sets and from the page layouts also only we have the permission or we can only set its visibility from the page layout not the access. So the access comes or can be uh, set from the fill level securities. Now the next term here is the record level security so in the record level securities we have the options like auto glue sharing rules manual sharing apex sharing so here the baseline like in the object level security we have baseline profile same in the record level security we have baseline OWD or you can say the most restrictive permission can be set from the OWD. okay so here in the record level security we will decide whether the other users for has the permission to see the owner records or not 
let's suppose I have a, two users, user A and user B and for the uh, test record only on the object we have given the permission read and create that is the user with this profile can create and read the records. Now comes to the OWD. In the OWD I have set the OWD for this test object as private. Okay, so in this case what will happen the records which are created by the user A will only be visible to the user A and the records which are created by the user B are only visible to B. That is only the owner can see and view the records. Not, they cannot see each other's record. Okay, now if I want that the other user can only view the records of one user. So in this case what we will do we will set the OWD as read only so in this case the owner will have the same permission as it is given on the profile but the other user now can read the records of the owner record okay now next if suppose i want some criteria to be included before sharing the record then we will move to the sharing rules so in this owd will be set as private now in the sharing rules based on the criteria or based on the owner we will set the visibility and share the records now the next comes the manual sharing where we will get the button on a page layout of a record and then uh, using this button we will provide the permission to the users. Okay, so hope you guys understand this sharing model and if still you have any question do let me know then we will create a fill group, complete video on this using the examples and the whiteboard. Alright, so the question is what is the difference between SOQL and the SOSL? So using the SOQL, we can query on only single object, but using the SOSL, we can search in multiple objects or in the complete organization. So the second is using the SOQL, we can query on any field of any data type, but in the SOSL, there is a uh, limitation that is we can only search the fields which are of data type, text, email and form. So the third is in the SOSL, we can perform the DML operation on the results but in the SOSL the, um, we cannot perform any DML operation on the results. So the next is in the SOQL re records are returned as a result matching the all the filter criteria which we have provided in the query and in the SOSL fields will be going to return as a results. So in many previous documentation it was written that the SOQL can be used in triggers and the apex classes both but the SOSL can only be used in the apex classes not in the trigger. So uh, this currently this is not uh, true so we can use SOSL too in the apex classes also and the triggers also. Hello, so the question is I have a batch class and it is executed. I want to know the number of uh, record IDs uh, which are processed successfully. So normally what happens are batch class executed in number of chunk depend upon the size of records. So we are unable to retain the values from one chunk to another. Okay, so to retain uh, and in our question we need something so that we can able to retain the value from one chunk to another then only we are able to collect the total IDs which are processed successfully. So there is an interface that is database dot stateful. So using this interface we are able to retain the values from one chunk to another. Okay. So in our execute method we will add a logic we will create a list and in this we will add the IDs which are processed successfully. So first time when the chunk will execute all the IDs will be collected here and then the second time the chunk will execute. So this time due to this interface we are able to retain the values and more number of IDs will be collected in this list. So the question is what are the different ways to create a record for the object if the tab for particular object is not available. So there are different options. So the number one is from the developer console. So from the developer console also we have options like from the query editor. In the query editor, uh, if we execute the query for a particular object and then we will get an option to create a new record. And if we click on this, it will directly redirect to us to a pop-up screen where we can enter the details for our record. Now the next option is from the anonymous window where we can add the details and use the insert DML. 
Now the next is from the data import wizard, data loader from the workbench, we can add and remove our records. And the next is if you have seen when we used to open any object, then in the URL, the name of the particular object is given. So instead of that object, if we replace with our object API name, then it will open the list view for this particular object and we will get an option to create a new record. So what is manual sharing and what are the conditions in which we are able to see this manual sharing button on a record? So manual sharing is, so in this condition, we get a button on a record using which a record user can able to share its record with the other user or the public groups. So there are the conditions in which we are able to see this button every time it is not visible. So the condition are if the OWD for the particular object or its related object is set as most restrictive that is either private or public read only then only we are able to see this button on a record like uh, example we have account and its related object is the opportunity and here account is having the OWD set as public read and write but the opportunity is having the OWD set as private so in this condition we are able to see this uh, sharing button on accounts record because the related object is having the restrictive OWD. So what is OWD? So OWD is the basic level of access to records for all the users in the organization. So this is the basic level of access where you provide the most restrictive access for our records and then further it is enhanced by the sharing rules, roles, role hierarchies and the manual sharing, sharing settings here. So the different permission here we have are the private, public, read only, public, read and write, public, read and write, transfer, control by parent. So the control by parent is where if the objects are related to each other via master reader relationship, so the parent object having the permission will be the same for the child object. Example, like if for a particular object, the OWD is set as a private, then only the owner of the record and the above hierarchy user can only have the access for read and write and the below hierarchy users will not have the access for this uh, for the records. So the difference between the authentication and the authorization. So if in simple words I say the authentication is the process where we verify whether the particular user is having the access of this application or not where this is verified using the uh, username and password biometrics whatever the details entered by the user so in this we just verify the user for this access access of user for this particular application and then the next comes the author authorization where we will check whether this particular user is having the access that is the read or write permissions for particular object of the application. So you, if I say the example of that if I want to integrate my Salesforce and Stripe then the first step will be the authentication where I will enter the username and the password and if the application verifies them then the authentication process is successful next if i want to access bank statement from the stripe then it will again application will check whether this particular has access of this uh, statement to access then the authorization will be successful so today's interview question is what is mixed statement and how we can avoid this so the big DML occurs when we try to perform DML on setup and the non-setup object on same transaction like or in the asynchronous classes uh, or IR, as we know our Apex classes and the triggers run synchronously and if in this I try to perform DML on like opportunity and the user then it will going to throw me an error because they can't be run in same transaction. So to avoid this error what I will do, we will separate the transaction using the asynchronous methods like the future method. So here we will either uh, the setup or the no setup object DML will be performed in one of the asynchronous method. And in the test classes, we can avoid this by using the system.run as or using the test.start test .start test and test.stop test. So using both this, we can avoid or bypass this mixed DML error. 
Hi, so today's question is what is data is queue in Salesforce? So you guys might have heard about this word data is queue. So this is the condition when large number of data is distributed unevenly in a Salesforce org. Like example, if a single parent is having more than 1000 records, child records related to it. And like if a single user in a Salesforce is a uh, owner of more than 10,000 records of a single object. So this is the condition. So this leads to major condition like a uh, performance hit and it also affects the other automations which are working. So this is the condition which one should avoid as it will lead to the major problem. So there are the three types of data skew we have. First is the account skew and the owner skip, uh, ownership skew and lookup skew. So uh, we'll discuss more. Uh, about these types of SKUs and how we can avoid this and what are the harmful effects we get in our own you because of this data SQ in a complete video. So this is a, just an overview on data SQ. Hope you guys find video useful and if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And also if you guys don't know let me tell you that uh, we have also ha we also have the Salesforce community group and if you want to join, you can join. The this link is given in the description and in the about too. So for any queries, you can also mail me. So the mail ID is also given in the description. And next we will going to start with the LWC series. So many of them, many of you are also uh, text regarding the same. So we'll start with the LWC now. And so stay tuned till then. Take care. Goodbye.